Welcome back to my channel then and uh, yeah it's been a good month or so since I've been able to get out on the bank but today it's my birthday and I've got four days on the bank so four days three nights and uh, for the start of this trip I have made the journey to Bells Mill Fishery now it's absolutely stunning it looks incredible I've uh, got myself booked into swim number six via the uh, go catch app and uh, yeah it gives me a fair few options to play with so I'm really really excited to get going now uh, it's a little after nine o'clock just barrowed down my gear from the car park and uh, as you can tell from uh, from the sky from the blue sky and uh, the beautiful illuminated island and margins it's going to be an absolute scorcher today mid 20s easy but thankfully in uh, peg number six I've got a uh, nice amount of shades so not going to uh, sweat me nuts off before I've even started so uh, that's always good Barrow's already here I'm in the swim I've uh, checked out on the map what sort of water I've got to play with but I know swim number seven is empty uh, today so someone will be turning up there tomorrow but I've got sort of like a couple of islands out in front of me You've got some open water and I've also got a left hand margin now as I was walking down the sort of track to just bring myself into the swim I did hear a fish bosh and uh, whilst I've been stood here as well I've um, seen a back sort of come out just to the left in this uh, little corner of the uh, sort of bay area as well so I think whilst I'm setting up I'm going to just flick a few pouches of a uh, few pouches of mixers out and just see if I can get anything interested and I might better have a little bit of uh, surface action but I think that'll be a good start you know I'm in no rush to get set up or anything like that I'll just uh, yeah take my time and make sure I get things right it's a small intimate little lake and I've got the drone with me and I've already been given permission to send that up throughout the course of my stay so I'll give you some aerial shots of the lake as well which I'm really really excited about using my drone in my first uh, first vlog so I'm really excited about that as well been having a few practice goes uh, out and about so uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to sending that up and seeing how that footage comes out as well but uh, enough of an intro let's get the uh, let's get the mixers out Let's fire a few pouches out see if we can uh, get anything interested and uh, yeah we'll just take the morning slowly take it from there have a little think about where I'm going to uh, set up some traps for the uh, for the day and the night in the rest of my session and uh, yeah fingers crossed I can uh, stick a birthday fish or two on the mat so yeah without further ado let's get going so as you can imagine with uh, surface fishing every bird on the lake decides to come for a free meal and that's the bit i just have not got the patience for when surface fishing is uh yeah trying to combat these it's uh, a losing battle at the best of times and uh there are one or two fish just up on the surface just creeping up and down this margin so uh <clears throat> i might just get a few bits sorted see if these lot do one and maybe try and just flick two or three biscuits down there see if I get any interest but I think I'm going to need to be sneaky and stealthy to uh, yeah, not raise the uh, awareness and suspicions of these guys to keep calm keep coming and absolutely annihilating any chances that I've got of trying to catch one off the top
Right, so I thought I would talk you through very quickly uh, what I found with the Chirp 2 attached to the Bushwhacker. So I was just sort of, fit, sort of shipping it out to features that I probably will fish to, you know, up to the islands or just off the island, open water, etc. And depth wise, it's pretty much a uh, muchness of a muchness in all honesty, between sort of 5.2 and 5.5 five there or thereabouts. So I was really looking for just a sort of different sort of makeup on the lake bed, really. So as I started to ship it out, you see it's quite hard underneath my feet and then uh, it kind of makes its way to a more softer softer area so essentially the darker reds purples blues means the lake bed's actually quite soft there um, so I just carried on shipping it out and I actually come across a, uh, a handful of fish down on the uh, down on the lake bed just off that silty area so all them sort of smaller arches as you can see down the bottom right uh, tight minimum sort of a foot off the lake bed there was uh probably what two four maybe six fish there definitely five or six fish as you can see i don't think they were uh massive by any means but there were definitely some fish down there when i shipped that pole over the top of them so i kind of just carried on shipping it out really just to see on a medium beam and an 85% sensitivity, just how um, sort of hard or soft the lake bed by, might be. Now uh, it's pretty apparent that it's pretty much uh, fishable all over in all honesty. And then the closer I got up to the left hand island, it sloped up and then uh, yeah, there's a bit of uh, sort of I don't know whether it's sort of low lying weed um, or possibly some reed stems or anything like that. But as I got tighter up to the islands, you can see it goes right up. And then, uh, yeah, there's something sort of on that lake bed that's very soft. So if I come back, probably about um, maybe sort of half of a uh, bushwhacker section to, you know, half to one meter. So, yeah. Um, just off the island you know that you're fishing just off that drop off before it goes up to the island so yeah i just kind of pulled it back and just let it sort of drift around in the wind to try and find anything that i could find So two out of three rods have gone out already. And just before I put this third one out, I just thought I'd show you how I've got it set up for this session because the rules are slightly different here at Bell's Mill Fishery. So I've had to change my usual type of uh, shorter leadless leaders. So I'll just show you how I've got it set up. So I've got a length there of uh, tungsten tubing now that's really heavy really supple and although the lake bed's quite barren out there there's nothing for it really to sort of drop over but i just know that that when it goes out it's going to be flush to the lake bed so it's not going to be up or down or anything like that it's going to be nice and heavy and sat down out of the way then i've actually changed uh the way i do um the sort of lead attachment to the uh sort of tubing i did previously use solid bag stems but i've kind of gone off them because they're quite long they're quite bulky so i've kind of gone off them i moved down to uh, an anti-tangle sleeve sort of like your lead clip arrangement type anti-tangle sleeve and still weren't 100 percent happy and i'm now now that i've streamlined this right down i'm actually quite happy with uh, how it's set up in all honesty so so if I can get that camera to focus on the lead, but can you just see that really small little anti-tangle sleeve that I've got there? Basically, it's the uh, the mini version from uh, Bank Tackle. Now I've used these, I use them a lot just to cover the quick change swivel on that end. But what I've done is I just cut a very small amount off of this end that just opens up the hole on the uh, on the anti-tangle sleeve to get this tungsten tubing just tucked inside and then it also then just fits nicely over 
the stem of the inline lead. Now this is all perfectly safe, all sort of meets the uh, fisheries rules and if for any reason I was to uh, sort of my main line was to break and leave anything behind this would all come apart with ease even down to the uh, swivel inside the lead that comes out of the lead with absolutely no pressure at all and I like that when I'm using solid bags because it allows the sort of bolt effect initially when the fish picks up the bait and hits the uh, hits the lead but then it also becomes like a running rig as well because the swivel is so lightly sort of tucked inside the lead it just takes off and you get some real belting runs so it, it sucks up the bait feels that lead straight away and then as it rips off the lead just sort of pops off the swivel and it just becomes a uh, just becomes a running rig and uh, yeah like I say you get some absolute belting uh, belt takes on it now down to the rig itself is sort of three and a half inches long um, supple rig as you should have inside the top of a solid bag you can just get that tucked up in the bag nice and easy size four wide gape hook see if I can get that to focus there you go size four wide gape micro barbed little bit of shrink tubing on the uh, shaft of the hook and a little bit of shrink tubing just to open up the uh, the hook itself um, just to make it a little bit of a bigger gape and then down to a nut 365 hinders wafter and uh, I've gone with sort of three different colors on the uh, on the setup so I've gone down for a seafood yellow a seafood pink trimmed down a bit smaller than uh, this hook bait so I'm having sort of three colors and then this one obviously being a neutral type color that will match um, some of the sort of free offerings that I put in the spoon as well. So yeah, really safe setup, meets the fisheries rules. If for any reason the main line was to snap, all the fish would be trailing around is, is the rig, none of this end gear, and eventually it would dispose of that as well. But uh, yeah, I think it's time to get the bag built, get this last rod out, sit back and chill. After all, it is my birthday. Well, the afternoon is uh, ticking on slowly it's five to three nothing's actually happened yet but what I am seeing is up against this left-hand island the fish are so so tight in there um, I just don't think I'm close enough to the island I'm fishing just on that sort of drop off at the bottom I think what I need to do is really sort of just budge and bash that bushwhacker right up tight against the uh, against the island because they are sort of thrashing and just sort of boshing in the uh, in the sort of undergrowth on the island right in tight so I think we need to get a new get with them the rods in um, redo the solid bags get them in that bushwhacker and get it butted right up tight against that island and I think that'll give me a much better chance of uh, maybe sticking one on the mat um, before it gets dark so let's get that rod in and uh, yeah see if we can make something happen Right, well, that is me then done for the evening. It's uh, half past eight already. Got quite a bit of cloud cover tonight, which is quite nice, and a little bit of a wind as well, um, which is making things a lot cooler than it has been today. It's been absolutely scorching, but it's gonna hover around sort of eight, 17, 18 degrees tonight. So uh, yeah, there's absolutely no need for me to get under the sleeping bag or anything like that. It's gonna be a proper toasty night. So uh, very quickly, one rod has gone over to the corner of that island. Middle rod has gone over just off the uh, face 
of the uh, left hand side island that I've got and then the left hand rod has gone down this margin now uh, I was just speaking to uh, an angler a couple of swims down from me and uh, one proper just sloshed his head out and went back down which is the first proper show that I've seen um, all day really apart from them uh, sort of getting up and down the face of this island so uh, it's looking encouraging that the fish are still in the area and uh, yeah hopefully they uh, yeah they've come across my solid bag down there it is a sort of trappy type water setting your traps and sitting on them so uh, I've not gone gung-ho I've only just gone in with a pellet a bit of broken broken sort of crumb down boily nothing too heavy at all and it's all gone out either by hand in the edge or obviously with the bait and spoon so I try to keep things as low key as possible and uh, hopefully with that fish showing down to the left they're uh, still sort of confident and sort of uh, yeah not spooked off or anything like that so they're all still in the zone which is promising going into the evening so it's gonna have to wait and see first night really on a brand new water not yet unlocked the uh, the code but I'm confident that what I'm using the tactics that I use suit perfectly for this type of water intimate type of water so let's see how the uh, the night goes hopefully i'm bringing this camera back onto you through the hours of darkness with uh yeah a nice bells mill fishery carp resting in the net so fingers crossed let's uh make myself something to eat and settle down for the night oh well good morning then it's uh just after 5 a.m and i've heard two boshes um, since I've been stirring the last sort of hour or so and uh, I've jumped out the uh, jumped out the, the bivvy looked down to my right and uh, yeah I've seen exactly where they are so I've very quickly made a solid bag and I'm just going to go and flick it down there for a few hours it's definitely in number seven's water but probably just on the boundary but as there's no one in there in, until 10 a.m this morning I'm going to go and be cheeky and lower a solid bag in there. In all honesty, it's not actually that far off a spot I've been beating um, since I've been here as a bit of a backup spot and one that I'm probably going to fish tonight in the margins. So that's quite em encouraging that there's probably fish within a couple of rod lengths off that. So I'm going to quickly go and drop this solid bag rod, um, drop this solid bag into that spot and uh, yeah, just give it a few hours really and see what happens. It's not far out at all, 10, 15 yards, 20 yards, absolute push. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens as the uh, morning starts to break through, but uh, really quiet night. First sort of signs of fish that I've seen in all honesty, apart from the one show just on dark last night. So see if we can go and make this happen. It's uh, saved the blank. I'd uh, seen, like I say, two shows down to my right hand side. Quickly knocked up a solid bag just after first light, lowered it in, and uh, yeah, half an hour it was away. So uh, I guess it's going to be a case of uh, just doing exactly the same. Getting another bag made up, quickly dropping it back down there, sitting back, and hope that they uh, move in again. But yeah, really nice, pretty little scaly one and uh, a classic example really of some of the fish that uh, reside here at uh, yeah, Bell's Mill so get a quick picture with this one and then uh, I'll slip it back Well, it's a couple of hours on since that fish just after sort of first light 
um, I managed to redo all three rods so they all needed a freshen up so whilst I had one in I decided to do the other two as well so the right hander went straight back down to where I had that fish from middle rod has gone over to the island because <clears throat> I actually saw a fish show to the left hand side of it um, sort of a little while after just as the sort of sun was rising over my shoulder <clears throat> so uh, yeah I thought that was a good of an opportunity to stick one over there and then the left hander which I had down the left hand margin I've redone but just put it down sort of half a rod length further um, there is a nice breeze blowing from right to left today which uh, yeah might just make that that sort of left hand side a little bit more attractive to the fish it's not as hot there's a bit of cloud cover and uh, yeah it generally feels all right for a bite at least a daytime bite anyway yesterday it was just way too hot the fish I just see were just sort of milling around cruising around um, you know not at any speed just slow lethargic and I think they were just happy just sucking up the sun on their backs so uh, yeah today feels like it could be a good day for a day uh, a good day for a day bite now every single peg on the lake is taken today so whether the pressure of other anglers turning up um, pushes the fish around a little bit um, who knows but I'm going to just keep everything low key like I have been um, just try and keep everything sort of out the way of the fish try and keep disturbance to a minimum and hopefully that will put more fish on the bank for me so I'm going to finish this uh, coffee think about what I want to have for breakfast and just yeah let this sun warm my back as uh, I keep an eye out over the water for any signs of fish number two in the net so the uh the rod that i had the fish on uh just after first light this morning i dropped back out with another handful of pellet over the top and uh it's just after nine o'clock now and uh yeah it's in the net lovely jubbly really really weird though because the rod was just sat there had a few beeps the indicator moved up about a centimeter for all oh, bit of interest and then nothing slackened right off again done it again slackened right off done it again for the third time so I thought the line must be caught on something up the margin because the wind's picked up now I'm wondering if obviously it's you know tightening the line but no I'd uh, it picked right up I've been watching the tip and the tip was bouncing and uh, yeah all of a sudden I'm playing a fish wasn't caught up on anything or anything at all so it must have literally just been sat there shaking his head or just moving all of a you know a centimeter or two just to ever so slightly try and move away and obviously dislodge that lead but it was so so weird that fish must have been on a good sort of two three four minutes before i'd actually lifted into it and you know realized there was a fish on the end but yeah really really weird really really weird take and uh yeah really crafty of the fish to um just try and sit still and just shake his head and get rid of that get rid of that hook so anyway I've had a look at him in the net he's a really really nice one so uh, let's get him out on the mat and have a little look now check this one out 20 pounds an ounce is literally a smidgen over 20 pounds look at him he is a mega fish look how clean he is I absolutely love those scales taking on that solid bag down that right hand margin again where I had that one from this morning but just look at him what a bruiser I didn't even know I had him on in all honesty until all of a sudden I started to see that rod tip bounce he hadn't taken any line and uh, I just very carefully glided him over the net and uh, he is now on my mat thankfully look at him such a mega fish just show you the uh, just show you the other side as well because uh, it's just as nice oh, what a fish so so happy that's made my session to be quite honest with you I was happy with that one this morning pressure was off but just look at him what a bruiser proper nice scales on him well happy with that I've been in sprinkled a little bit more pellet down there so time to get a few pictures very very quickly slipping back see if we can two, turn two into three Oh, 
you're never going to believe this it's probably around half past 10 i was just sat there in the bivy having a look at the uh, pictures from the fish that i just slipped back and the left hand rod that i placed down the margin has gone squealing off i've just been playing it for probably the best part of 10 minutes but we have got a mega mega ghosty common in there he looks sick and uh, it's no wonder that he was scrapping like a good one to be honest i always find ghosties are a bit crazy um they do go but underneath the rod tip i was playing him what felt like an eternity but my god when he come up in this blue water he was glowing white oh so so happy free bites this morning buzzing 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 This session just could not get any better. Check this out, 35 pound ghosty common. Wow, I'm blown away. Taking off the margin down the left hand side. Oh my God, check this absolute unit out. And now I know why it was going some. I knew it was decent when I was playing it. And I knew it was decent in the net, but I didn't know it was a 35 pound ghosty. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God look at the size of that 35 pounds an ounce is what an absolute donkey oh my god i am blown away solid bag down the left hand side tutti fruity trimmed down orange hinders wafter and uh that been out there probably two and a half three hours since this morning and uh this one got himself down the margin and had a little feast on my solid bag contents There we go, that is the other side. Just look at the size of that. Wow, 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 wow. Blown away. Session complete. I am absolutely buzzing. <sighs> oh, that sun's come out now, absolutely roasting, but it's not gonna stop me from getting that rod straight back down that margin. So uh, there's the solid bags. I Just because I'm lowering them in um, pretty much underneath the rod tip, I like to make them just a nice flat profile. Just find that they go down and just sit on anything that might be down there. You can see in the corner there as well, the uh, little trim down tutti fruity wafter. I haven't used orange in ages to be honest and I thought, you know what, I've got nothing to lose. I'm gonna try an orange one and that 35 pound. Uh, fish known as scar apparently one of the a-team and at its top weight um, as well so really really happy about that i've just been on the phone to uh, john who uh, owns and runs bells mill and uh, yeah he tells me um, there's a chance of another big big one or uh, a couple of big ones because uh, an angler in in here before um, a while ago had 330s on the bounce apparently now me i'm not going to be greedy i'm more than happy with what i've had but yeah i if that happened my god i'd be even more blown away but anyway that's a solid bag orange tutti fruity wafter in the corner let's go and drop it back down there and then what i'm doing is just giving it a sprinkle of the uh, pellet combo as well they've been uh glugged up in the uh the seafood oil so uh, I've just sort of given them a nice dousing of that and as you can see, nice and shiny. I've been putting them in the sun so it just dries into the pellets and uh, yeah, give a load more pulling power. So I'm just gonna go and give a handful of that over the top of the solid bag. That's exactly what caught me that fish. So uh, there is no reason why it won't work again. So might actually get some breakfast on the go once I finish this, uh, finish putting out this rod. My God, I am absolutely ravenous. What a busy, busy morning. It's around half past five and uh, from about midday, I've had the rods in, been up to the car, taking some stuff back. Um, I've been baiting up the margin spot, sort of every hour, just trickling in a little bit of pellet just to keep the spots ticking over. And I thought, you know what, it's probably, now that that sun's gone in, there's a bit of cloud cover, I thought, you know, there's probably time that I uh, drop the rods out. Now, upon walking down to that, that margin, down my left-hand side, I'd walked into the margin, and I was just seeing swirls. And I thought, oh, might be, might be of a chance here. So, uh, lowered in the solid bag, give another little light scatter in a pellet. I reckon the uh, rod was on the rest for about, I don't know, two minutes. And we got another common in the net. I literally couldn't believe it. It was, yeah two minutes at best and it's gone rattling off 
so they were down there and they've been down there obviously for a little while just getting a little free meal with no lines in the water just a little bit of freedom to do what they want and uh yeah it's paid off i've just been sort of chilling out on the bed chair out of the way of the sun and uh yeah just kind of resting had a bit of a rough night's sleep so uh yeah i thought why not get the rods in give them a little bit of uh sort of free water because obviously every peg is taken now a lot more disturbance and just let them sort of do what they want around in front of me and it's paid off so uh let's get them out on the mat and have a little look right well it's been an absolute lunatic on the mat but that is fish number four just look at him mega mega clean common well happy with that the rod had literally been down there a minute as i walked up to the left hand margin i see swirls underneath my feet and i generally thought it was going to be good for a bite but just not that quick again taking on the tutti fruity orange wafter trimmed down inside the solid bag and uh yeah less than a minute two minutes it was away happy day so i'm going to try and get some pictures very very quickly slipping back and i've got two rods to sort because he managed to wipe out my middle rod in the meantime half past eight um i'm gonna redo all three rods now to go into uh the hours of darkness there won't be any disturbance or anything like that i'm literally lowering him off the end of the rod tips but they've been out a good sort of three three and a half hours through that sort of early evening into late evening sort of period so i'm going to freshen them up ready for uh the evening and uh go and give them a good generous spread of pellet over the top as well and see if we can make it number five um i'm going to be disappearing around sort of 9 a.m tomorrow to get myself off down to linear tar farm so i want to be up nice and early packed down and sorted but there is still um you know a good 12 hours to try and stick another fish on the map but not going to be greedy but it would be nice. So I'm going to do everything I can in my powers to try and make it happen. So another beautiful evening. I'll get the rod sorted and I probably won't get the camera back out then um, until anything happens. So it might not be uh, until the morning, but we will see. But yeah, it's looking absolutely mega this evening. And uh, gone all flat calm now, wind's died off. And uh, perfect for spotting any shows there we go really nice clean lean long mirror angry as you like kicking off in the net and on the mat so very never very quick look i'm gonna slip him back get that solid solid bag back out and we will see if we can put another one on the mat before morning little top up of the pellet as well and uh, that is the reward another fish number five what a session it's been a fish on all rods morning then so little after half past six first things first coffee in hand secondly i'm going to redo the rods quickly so i'm going to call it a day around 9 at 9 a.m because i want to get off on the road over to linear but that isn't going to stop me freshening up the rods so i had that fish at midnight um the other two have remained motionless but then again i didn't get any bites the first night through darkness so i'm quite happy that one i moved the rod dropped it in shorter and got a bite and uh two as we know from the first sort of morning after um anything sort of within half an hour of redoing the rods and sort of fish being in the area i got my first bite and that sort of basically stemmed um sort of further bites that morning um again another one straight after um so there's you know always a chance if i redo these rods that i could get another bite now you know i'm not being greedy and and you know i'm more than happy to walk away with what i've had but uh but yeah i think it's well worth freshening up the rods to just see if i can stick one further bonus fish on the mat so exactly what i've done just quickly made up a solid bag a little tutti fruity orange in there just going to go and lower that in on all three rods very light sprinkling the pellet over the top literally just press and repeat on everything that i've done throughout the uh, course of this session and uh yeah just see if it basically pays off for me and sticks another fish on the mat so i'm going to neck the rest of this coffee 
get this out in the lake, redo the other two and then think about a very slow pack down. Right, well, it's a little after 8 a.m. and I'm on, on the final sort of pack down. Barrow is pretty much loaded. The rods are on the deck, upside down, ready for any spool spinners in the next hour. Now, I've got to be quick with this outro because I've literally got a minute's worth uh, left of uh, footage space on this card because obviously all of the footage that I've recorded throughout this session. So if you've got this far, thank you for watching. If you're interested in booking Bell Smell Fishery yourself, get yourself over to the Go Catch app. You can book a swim on any given day and you can come and fish this beautiful, beautiful venue and fish for some of these stunning fish. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna wrap it up and disappear in the next hour. Head over to Linea for the second half of my birthday sort of weekend as such so as always give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below and more importantly hit that subscribe button to uh, check out any of my future in session videos so from me and bells mill fishery thanks for watching and i'll catch up with you next time i am out on the bank